Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel. It is time for some meta predictions for EUIC. Now, EUIC is actually going down in a couple of hours as this is going up. I actually kind of forgot that EUIC started a day earlier and also the London time zone. So I want to get this out for you guys. My predictions for EUIC, what decks we'll see, what's going to be popular, what I think is going to win the tournament and all that stuff. I did do a video recently on the channel here where we did look at an EUIC tier list where I kind of gave more of my opinion on where the meta is right now. Uh, but I'm really excited to talk about uh, what decks are going to appear at EUIC, what I think is going to go down at EUIC. It's a fresh format, new format, all kinds of new decks. It is a great time. And we are still, once again, in that undefined meta where we don't truly know what is the best deck right now and what's the best way to play each deck. And I think EYC is going to set the standard for what the meta game is going to look like going into the future, which I'm excited for. If y'all are new here to the second channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We're on the road to 13,000 subs. Leave a like on the video if you want to enjoy. What are your predictions for EYC? Do you have any underdog decks you want to see win? Let me know. Now we're going to start things off with Charizard. Now, it's very much set in stone. Charizard it's the best deck in the format. I think it's the best deck for the tournament. And uh, this Charizard list here that I got, a lot of the lists, by the way, that are on this video were, like, from online tournaments that did well. And this is a winning Charizard list from an online tourney. And I really like this 60 with the uh, Eerie in the deck. Charizard has been teching in Eerie now. Eerie does help a lot. Again, Shen Pao, um, it helps in Mirror. And, yeah, Charizard, just really good right now with that Mist Energy, which you can put on your Pidgeot to prevent TM Devolution. You do have the Maxim Belt, Double Counter Catcher, Rodom. Some Charizard lists are playing a double Rodom right now, but I do think that Charizard is by far the best deck in the format right now. It's the best deck for EUIC, and it's most likely going to be the most played deck at EUIC day one. I think Pidgeyzard is going to be the way to play Charizard right now. I don't think Bibzard is quite good at the moment. I think Pidgeyzard is by far the best build, and my prediction is Charizard, being the best deck, has the highest chance of winning the tournament, but also is going to be the most popular deck in day one. I think that will 100% be the case. But close behind it is Lugia. I think Lugia is in a great spot in this meta. And Lugia is probably going to be the second most played tech at EUIC. Lugia is a very strong deck now with Cinchino. And it has a decent matchup against Charizard because of the Cinchino. The one matchup Lugia needs to watch out for is obviously going to be Iron Hands. But my other prediction with Lugia is that it is the second most played deck. I think... Charizard, with, well, without a doubt, is the most played deck at EUIC. I don't think anyone's going to deny that. Very good chance we're going to see Charizard be the most played deck in day one. Lugia will most likely be number two behind it in terms of most played decks. And I think Lugia is a very good deck for this tournament. If you just dodge the future hands, which we don't even know if that deck is actually even real. We don't know if that's even going to be a deck to keep our eyes on. Like, is it going to be as good and popular as Maridon was in the past formats, or is it just kind of like Entei Valiant where it exists, but it's not going to be that popular? And I think Lugia Cinchino definitely is in a really good spot. It's got a good control matchup, good Zard matchup. Um, Lost Box, not a great matchup, I guess, because they have like Lightning 2. I mean, any deck with Iron Hand is going to suck. I think Shampao is another matchup Lugia might struggle against, but Lugia is in a great spot right now and is without a doubt going to be the second most played deck at EUIC. And then, of course, I want to talk about Shampao. Shampao looks like it's in a good spot going into EUIC. Now, that could change post EUIC, which I can definitely see happening. But I do think that Shampao is in a pretty good spot right now. Iron Hands is ridiculous. Iron Hands obviously being really, really good against single prize decks, really good against Lugia, which obviously is just nice to have. And Shampao is one of the only decks that can consistently use Iron Hands since you can attack with it multiple times in a game as long as you're able to super odd and get it back into play. So there's a pretty good chance that we do see Shampao EX um, see a lot of play. It's probably not going to be like that. Like, probably top five most played deck. I, I could see it maybe being, like, number four or five. I don't think it'll be the third most played deck, but Shampao can be uh, number four and five. But I could definitely see Shampao being a pretty good play for this tournament. I mean, Iron Hands seems really good in the format. And this is one of the best decks right now that can abuse Iron Hands. And you could make the argument that this deck is better than Turbo Hands because it has a better Charizard matchup, right? So there is the argument to be made there with Shampao over Future Hands. So we'll have to see. But I do think Shampao is at least going to be a top five most played deck. Now, Control. Control is looking very good for this tournament. Now, there are two different versions of Control. I think the most popular and common way to play it is going to be the, you know, straight-up Snorlax build with no Pidgeot EX, mainly because this build is a little bit easier to manage. It's a lot more straightforward, and sometimes it's all you really need to win a game is just how straightforward Snorlax stall is. Again, gaining cards like Eerie is just ridiculous for the deck, um, and it has a really good Charizard matchup and a good Shenpao matchup, considering those 
are arguably going to be two of the best decks for the tournament, there's a pretty good chance we see Control do well at EUIC. Um, I do think that there are going to be some big players on Control. I 100% think there's going to be some big players on Control, without a doubt. Like, I am going to guarantee you, even some of the more familiar names might even be on Control this weekend. You never know. But I do think that Control is in a very good spot right now this weekend. It's probably going to be played by some of the top players in the game. We might... I mean, not even we might. We are going to see at least one control that can top eight. I'm going to make that prediction. There's going to be one control in top eight. Hands down, there has to be at least one control. And we'll see what Sander brings, too. Sander probably won't play Snorlax. He'll play some crazy Pidgeot contraption, but that's my opinion. But I do think that Snorlax will be in top eight, and there's going to be some big players on it. Uh, Arctina, pretty uh, solid, just straight up, you know, cheese deck right now. Seems like it's a good call for this tournament. It's probably the best way to play Arceus. Um, I do think Arctina should probably look at playing Aerodactyl. It's really good for Lugia. Lugia is one of Arctina's worst matchups. In fact, I think it is the worst matchup for Arctina. Arctina is a great deck. It can beat so many of the decks in the meta. It like 50-50 some stuff, but it has a really bad matchup against Lugia. And Aerodactyl might make that matchup slightly more tolerable. And then you also get like an extra fighting attacker, which can help against hands and in the mirror match. So Arctina is decent. I can definitely see one get, like, top eight for sure. It's, it's just one of those decks that just does what it does and just runs things over really easily. Um, with Judge, you can play Eerie, um, the Aerodactyl. We'll have to see if Aerodactyl is going to be common in the deck or not, or whether or not we just see straight up Arctina without Aerodactyl, or we do see the Aerodactyl technology in the deck. Um, now, Lost Box is in another interesting spot right now. So the deck does get better, in my opinion, because Iron Hand's one of the, one of the best decks to abuse it. Um, it has a lot of tricks. Sableye is really good right now, too. Not a lot of decks really playing out to Sableye. I mean, Cramorant's good. Spirit Tomb's another deck. This card it gets to abuse, which Spirit Tomb seems good right now against Rotom and even Lumineon in some regards. But, yeah, I do think that Lost Box is going to be heavily played, mainly because it's just a lot of players, like, go-to deck when they want to play it. You know what I mean? It's just a very, it's a very consistent deck that most players who have played Lost Box throughout most of the seasons will probably just end up playing Lost Box again because the deck doesn't really change with rotation apart from gaining Buddy Buddy Poff and losing VIP and it also gains Prime Catcher which is a, new, a ridiculously good upgrade of the deck. Um, yeah we're gonna see some decent amount of Lost Box this weekend. I don't think it'll be in the top five. I could see Lost Box being like the sixth or seventh most played deck at EUIC. I'd probably put my money on like seventh most played deck. A lot of people are scared of Lost Box right now and that's mainly because of the um, the Charizard matchups never been fantastic. Um, and then also another big deal for Lost Box is of course Eerie, which is a really bad card for this deck, especially when you're stacking Mirage Gates. If your opponent just like randomly Eeries you, it can be devastating. Um, but I, I, I can see a Lost Box do well. I honestly think there could be a good chance one will squeak into top eight because most likely some of the top Lost Box players we've seen throughout the seasons are going to be playing the deck again. And this uh, Moon Hoopa Iron Hands build seems to be the best and most popular way to play it. Um, now, Turbo Hands, is this deck going to be a thing or not? Nah? I'm not too sure yet. The deck definitely seems very scary, though, and it does seem like a consistently strong deck if it doesn't brick. Like, literally, if the deck does not brick, which it tends to do, the deck is really good, and it has an insanely good Lugia matchup. I almost think the Lugia matchup is, like, almost auto-win. It's like it's literally almost an auto-win, in my opinion. Like, it's that favorite of a matchup. The Lugia matchup is so good for this deck. It's ridiculous. I think this deck will most likely be played. I mean, without doubt, it's the first tournament where, you know, this deck is allowed. It's a pretty hyped-up new deck. There's a good chance people are going to play it. How is the deck going to perform? Is it going to flop? I don't think we'll see this deck in top 8. I think we'll see one in top 16, but not in top 8. That's my prediction. This actually could be on the uh, the day 1 card, by the way. Um, it could definitely be maybe 6th or 7th most played deck with Lost Box. I can 100% see uh, Turbo Hands be in there. But we'll have to see if this deck is real or not. Um, now, Lost Tina seems decent. It's kind of the underdog of the format right now, it seems. I don't think a lot of people are really looking at Lost Tina right now and are like, eh, this deck exists. But I do think that we can see a Lost Tina do well. Honestly, there's a world where one could squeak in a top 8 without a doubt. Lost Tina seems like it's a strong deck. It does have a good Zard matchup, in my opinion. Um, you have an okay... I think your Lugia matchup's not great, but it's not bad either. Um, I think your Arctina matchup's... I mean, you probably lose to Arctina, because they have Gardevoir, and you don't have Path anymore. The rating Gardevoir kind of screws you over, but... I do think that, uh, Lost Tina's in a decent spot right now in this format, and I think it's the underdog deck. And if we think we can see one squeak into top 8 or top, si top 16, for sure. Uh, Guardi! Another deck that I think a lot of people are really underestimating how good it is. Now, Gardevoir will kind of rely heavily on how popular stuff like Lost Vacuum is, but I can definitely see Gardevoir doing well at EUIC. It's a deck that I think is still very strong. It does have a lot of potential. It still has, you know, Screamtail, Drifloon's decent. It's like the new Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Um, 
the deck's a bit slower than it was before, in my opinion, because you don't have, like, as much draw power as you did before, so you're not as, like, not aggro, I should say, but you just don't have, like, you don't have the dig through as you used to have, but the deck is still extremely powerful, in my opinion, and I think Gardevoir still has room to do really good in EYC. I, I can definitely see Gardevoir making, like, top 32, top 16. Probably not top 8, but we'll have to see, and if it can dodge all the turbo hands more power to this deck all right we got great tusk mill another deck a lot of people want to be good i'm not sold on this deck i think great tusk mill has been proven itself to be on the mid side i can't see great tusk mill doing great at this tournament i think that it's not the greatest play for euic in my opinion great tusk mill is probably like i don't know it's it's not a, not the best deck you want to hear my opinions on where i think the deck is in the meta definitely check out the tier list video but i think great tusk mill unfortunately is just kind of mid right now it's like not bad. Maybe somebody will do good at EYC with it. And if, I mean, if one player does do good enough with the deck, like gets top 32 or whatever, maybe the deck will see more play because then people will actually believe in the deck. But I'm not a believer in the Great Tusk Mill. I think that it's just kind of mid. It's not a bad deck by any means, but it does rely heavily on what's popular. Like if there's a lot of decks that are popular that can beat this deck, then this deck probably will not do very good. Uh, now, Ancient Box. This is a deck that I want to do good. Ancient Box is a bit of a pile, though. It doesn't really have a great engine in the deck. That's, like, the main weakness of this deck. Its engine is kind of bad. Its main engine is literally relying on Greninja not being prized half the time, and then relying on your Explorer's Guidances and Sawdust to bail you out. So it doesn't really have a great draw engine. It's very bricky. It's very slow. It's not a very good deck in the early game. I think, like, when you get to, like, the mid to late stage of the game, Ancient Box actually starts to pop off. I hopefully will see one in day two. I, I definitely think there'll be one Ancient Box in day two. This could maybe be one of the surprise decks that kind of does well in the tournament under the radar. It seems like it has the potential to do good. We just have to figure out a good 60, and then somebody has to have a good run with it where they don't obviously just have a bunch of games where the deck kind of just falls flat in its face and bricks, which unfortunately could happen. All right, then we have the Sablezard decks. Now, Sablezard is, in my opinion, not bad. Radiant Charizard is still very good, in my opinion. Do not underestimate how good Radiant Charizard still is in the format. And Lost Box is one of the best decks that does get to abuse it. Now, losing Clara is pretty bad for the deck. You can no longer Clara your Radiant Zard. But like I said, there's so many different Lost Box players out there. And obviously, we do have that other build with the Hoopa and the Moon and stuff, which is probably going to be the more popular way to play the deck. But I do think that there's room for Sablezard to also be one of the more heavily played decks in the tournament. Um, this build is obviously a bit more of a pile because you don't have any Greninja. You don't have draw power as much, so you're relying more heavily on just not bricking. But I do think that Sablezard is in a decent spot in our current format, and I uh, hopefully will see one do good in this tournament. I think there is a potential for Sablezard to do good at EYC. I think somebody will have a good run with it, at least a top 32 minimum, in my opinion, for Sablezard. Um, I want to talk about the Roaring Moon combo deck. I like this deck a lot. A lot of the, you know, decks now are just kind of like my wild card takes. And uh, this is a deck that I would love to see do good. I think that this dual Roaring Moon deck is better than people give you credit for. Um, it's very strong. It's got a good control matchup. The Dunsparce is like a low-key, a really underrated draw engine. And uh, the deck has some pretty good power levels with that Roaring Moon EX. I mean, Roaring Moon EX is still a very strong card in our format. Do not underestimate how good this card still is. And obviously, you do have the one prize Roaring Moon, which is a great offset to the Roaring Moon EX. The Dunsparce does give you a free retreat pivot, gives you a built-in draw engine. Um, this deck, honestly, is very consistent, in all honesty. I, I mean, I did a video on the deck, and I liked it a lot. I thought this deck was actually pretty good. So I definitely want to see this deck get Day 2 at EUIC. I'm sure somebody's tested and cooked it, and hopefully, fingers crossed, this deck gets Day 2, because I like it. All right, Pidgeot EX Control. The big scary elephant in the room this is a deck that i do feel like if somebody cracks a good 60 and cracks the code on the deck and does really good at euic there's a pretty good chance pidgeot control could be very popular in the field well, not very popular but could get very scary down the road because this deck is scary it's got so many options now the one thing this deck is doing right now is it's abusing wigglytuff ex it's got hero's cape the luxray v some builds aren't even playing Snorlax. I mean, this is like straight up a control deck. There's not even a Snorlax in the deck. There's a Mawile in the deck instead. But uh, like I said, this deck is pretty scary. Pidgeot control definitely does look like a pretty dirty deck. There are a few ways you can play it. Obviously, this Wigglytuff one is the one that's kind of tearing up the online tournament scene right now. But I do think that Pidgeot control is a deck that some like big control player is going to play. And if Sander is going to bring anything, it's going to be something probably similar to this. I guarantee you Sander will have a Pidgeot EX control deck at EUIC. And there's a good chance that it could be something like this with the Wigglytuffs, the Cloth EX, the Shiyu, the Luxray V, Radiant Charizard. There's a lot of things you can do with Pidgeot Control. It's a deck that definitely has a lot of options for what it can do and what it can play. I think that's the scary thing about this deck. It could evolve as the meta evolves. It's a pretty dirty deck, and I can definitely see Pidgeot Control do good at this tournament. 
And if somebody does do really good with it, if a big player plays it, which is very likely to happen, and it does well, this deck could be on people's radar. Um, and we got some cool decks. We got these Pathra Bayonet deck, a sleeper deck, but a deck that I think is a little more underrated than people give it credit for. And uh, I mean, I want to see this deck do good. I like Bayonet as Pathra. I like the idea of the deck. Now, this 60 might, you know, need to change a little bit. This is the one that won an online tournament. This, you know, list does probably need to change up a little bit. It's got to kind of work on itself. But I do think there is a world where somebody could get day two with Espathra. It's an underrated deck, in my opinion. I think the Bayonet's really nice. Even like just straight up Espathra's at two doesn't seem terrible either for this tournament. So we'll have to see where that deck goes. Um, Raging Bolt, another sleeper deck. This deck did do good in the late night tourney, and now it's started to get consistent top eights. Raging Bolt is kind of like a very strong run over your opponent style card because it can get so much energy out really quickly, and it can KO a lot of things in one hit. It's a very consistent deck when it sets up. Now, it is lacking consistency, though, in some regards because its engine is Sada, right? It doesn't have that great of an engine. I've been testing Guardy Raging Bolt myself, and I've liked it, but I do think that Raging Bolt Sandy Shocks can be a strong deck for EUIC. Somebody's going to get day two with it, in my opinion. I don't think this deck's going to be popular. It's probably not going to get top eight, probably not top 16. Somebody's going to get day two with this deck, I guarantee you. And I want to see that happen. And hopefully somebody who gets day two with it kind of sets the standard for where Raging Bolt can go heading forward. Goldango, another like underrated deck. I could see a Goldango or a two get day two. My issue with Goldango right now is Eerie is a huge issue for this deck. Like, if I'm playing Goldango, I'm probably going to have to play the Tulip or a Silene or two because I am very, very scared of the um, the Eeries because you obviously stack a ton of items in your hand with the superior energy retrievals because you're drawing so many cards with coin bonus, and then you get Eerie, and it feels super bad. But I would love to see Goldango do good at EYC, and it's certainly possible. I think somebody might get day two with the deck. Um, I don't think it's going to be popular. It's going to do amazing, unfortunately, but I can see somebody get day two with it. It's a cool deck that I want to see do well. Now, Dialga is another deck that's kind of like not really. I mean, it's sort of a meme, but not really a meme, if that makes any sense. Uh, Dialga seems like a very cool archetype that I don't think is a sleeper deck. Like, I wouldn't call it a sleeper deck, but I wouldn't call it, like, super underrated or anything. It's a deck that's kind of in the middle of, like, potentially a sleeper deck, underrated, but also decent. And, um, I mean, it did do pretty good at that Thailand tournament, and I think somebody may be testing this deck and might be trying to go for that day two. If Dialga gets day two, that'd be awesome. If Dialga gets, like, top 64, or top 32 that'd be kind of crazy it's kind of been dialga's story since it's come out it's always had these like random top 32 placements top 64 placements in like tournaments but it's never been like a meta deck but dialga matang somebody makes a good 60 and the 60 play pays off really well and does good enough in the tournament we could definitely see a dialga make it day two and maybe even make it to like top 32 now that would be pretty awesome all right, Gouging Fire, the deck that won Thailand Regionals. I think this is another deck people are uh, kind of sleeping on right now, in my opinion. So I want to see Gouging Fire do good. I think this deck is kind of sick. It's like kind of the new age of Roaring Moon, in my opinion, where it has like the double draw, the double energy acceleration engine with the Sada, with the Basin. Gouging Fire does a lot of damage, and uh, the deck seems decent. It's kind of like, it might be like the Roaring Moon of the format slash Ente Valiant of the format. I mean, quite literally, is like Ente Valiant, right? Because the deck will probably have to play the Iron Valiant. But yeah, I think Gouging Fire is a really strong deck, and uh, I think it's underrated. I think we'll see one in day two, 100%. Um, now, Bayonet Gardevoir is an interesting one. So, recently, the deck's been doing good in online tournaments. It won an online tournament, and this old-school, like, Bayonet Guardi deck, I say old-school because it's, like, how the deck was played before, and I'm pretty sure the person that won the tournament with the deck was the same one who won the tournament, or, or has been consistently getting day twos with Bayonet before. So, it's a deck that's already, like, kind of existed, and, uh, we probably might see if this, uh, the person, I forget their name, but if they play Bayonet, this Bayonet Guardi deck to EYC, they might get day two with it, um, We'll see a Bayonet Day 2, in my opinion. We'll, we'll see at least one Bayonet deck in Day 2. Will it be the Espather build? Will it be a different build? Or will it be Bayonet Gardevoir? Well, we'll have to wait and see. But Bayonet definitely looks like it's decent. And this Bayonet Guardi deck seems kind of cool. It won an online tournament. So who knows? Maybe somebody's going to get Day 2 with the deck. I think it's possible. All right. Now I want to talk about some Arc piles. Now, Arc, in my opinion, is in a bit of a weird spot. I think Arc has potential. And there's quite a few ways you could build an Arc pile. The issue with Arc pile right now is Lugia seems like a pretty bad matchup. Lugia kind of runs you over really easily. The best way to deal with Lugia is Aerodactyl, right? And it's not always a given. Now, I didn't want to highlight this Arc Vulpix Neuvern deck. I saw it in an online tournament. Arc Vulpix is something that could come back. I mean, hey, if Arc Vulpix won EYC last year, it could happen again. If somebody makes, like, Arc Vulpix something work, it's possible Arc Vulpix could have another good performance at EYC this year. Can it go for the back-to-back -back dubs? Probably not, but it'd be cool to see Arc Vulpix do well again. It's, I mean, it's supposed to do good, man. It's EYC. It's, it's how the deck did last year. But this Arc Vulpix Neuver deck's really cool. 
How good is it really? Not too sure, but I do like the idea of this kind of anti-meta Vulpix Arc deck, which I do want to highlight a little Vulpix for this tournament specifically. Um, Arc Aerodactyl seems okay. Another list here I got from an online tournament. I don't mind the idea of it. I mean, a double Aerodactyl makes it easier to obviously counter Lugia um, with like four shoes, four research. I'm hoping two jet energy. I said. Like I'm hoping you're hitting those consistent Aerodactyls turn two against Lugia. But yeah, Arc Aero doesn't seem terrible in my opinion. I don't think Arc Aerodactyl is a bad deck. Could be a pretty good play for um, EYC. Somebody could get a pretty good run with it. I mean, we've seen these Arc Aerodactyl piles do good before when Lugia has been a meta deck. Like even back in the day, there's been, like, people getting day two with arc arrow piles, and the same thing can happen once again. The biggest op for this deck is obviously going to be Charizard. That's going to be the main thing holding this deck back. Charizard does seem like a pretty bad matchup, but I don't know. If somebody can figure out how to beat Charizard, I mean, there is two Team Devo in this build I got here, but who knows? Maybe arc Aerodactyl has some potential behind it, and I would like to see the deck do good, because Aerodactyl, I think, is kind of underrated for this tourney. It's one of the only ways an arc pile, in my opinion, can even beat Lugia, is you probably have to play an Aerodactyl in the deck. Um, and then... I want to talk about future box. So more of like a type coverage box deck. I hadn't really been able to find one on Limitless that had like a bunch of types in it. There was like an Iron Leaves Turbo deck. There was like a one prize version with Moth and Bundle. Or Bundle. Iron Boulder. Wait, Boulder? Wait. Iron Treads. That's what it is. Bro, I got the names mixed up. <laughs> the Iron Treads is what the, the great the, the Dawn fan thing is called. But okay, whatever. Anyways. Yeah, I want to see a future box deck do good at EUIC. Not the Turbo Hands, but more of like a type coverage toolbox style deck. There might be one in day two. Um, it's cool. I like it. Because the future box stood in theory, if you're playing more Iron Leaves, you have a better Zard matchup. That's one of future hands' most awkward matchups is Charizard, right? Charizard is a bad matchup, but when you have the multiple um, Leaves in the deck, the Reboot Pod... Maybe EXP shares in the deck, which we do see this list play. Then maybe you're going to have a better matchup against Charizard. And I think that's what we could see cook up with the future Toolbox deck. So I want to see Future Box do well. I'm rooting for the deck still. I like it. And I want to see a Toolbox build. Not the Iron Hands build. I want to see a Toolbox style deck at day two. Finally, Maridon. I did want to briefly mention Maridon. So the deck got worse with the rotation, right? We lost some good cards like Raihan, like Peony, and Flaffy being a huge one. But... I might want to kind of look into Maridon. Maridon seems like a deck that, until somebody does well with it, nobody's going to ever consider the deck. Because I think Maridon has potential to come back into the format. Obviously, we don't have Flaff anymore, which does make the deck, like, a lot worse, obviously. But Maridon can still do Maridon things. Like, it's got a really good setup engine. It's got good attackers to choose from. It's another deck that can abuse Iron Hands. We just have to figure out a good way to kind of keep things flowing in the mid to late game. And that's going to be Maridon's ultimate weakness is how good can you stabilize a mid to late game because no, you no longer have Flaffy. So I want to see Maridon do good at EUIC. That would be pretty awesome. And I'm going to keep this in the back of my pocket. But there you go. Those are my EUIC predictions for all the decks we could see. In my opinion, the best decks, Charizard, Lugia, are going to be the two most played decks. Um, I think if the deck that has the highest chance to win the tournament, in my opinion, is either a control deck, Charizard, or Lugia. I think we'll see a Lost Box in top eight. We'll probably see an Arc deck in top eight, whether it's Arctina or some other weird Arc pile. Like I said, Arc won EUIC last year. History could repeat itself. Just saying. So I think we can see an arc pile in. Uh, I definitely think we'll see an arc pile in top eight. And uh, yeah, I definitely think we can see Charizard have a good chance of winning the tournament. Snorlax, a good control deck like Pidgeot EX control could do good too. We'll have to see what goes down. I'm excited. EYC is going to be starting in like four hours from now or three hours almost. Like it's going to be starting very, very soon by the time this video goes up. And I'm excited. I don't think, unfortunately, I'm going to stay up to watch it, but I'll hopefully wake up and see what people cooked up at EYC. They're going to put all the good players on stream, which I'm excited to see what the top players brought to this tournament. Like I said, I think a lot of the Lost Box players from past formats are going to continue to play Lost Box and innovate. I think Lugia is going to be very represented. Charizard is going to be played by two, you know, obviously really good players. I think Snorlax will also be played by some big players, stuff like that. Uh, we'll have to see how it all goes down. I'm excited for EYC, though. It's going to be a good time, and I uh, hope y'all are excited for it, too. And I'll catch you on another video. Let me know what you think of the meta predictions down below. Leave a like if you wanted to enjoy the video, and make sure to subscribe down below, and I will catch you all very soon. Bye-bye.